Wild Kitty appeared and today for you I'm doing a video for Pride Month. Yes, it is June. We're in June. It is Pride Month and I have mentioned this before on my channel, but I am. Bye, bye, bye. So yes, so today's video I'm actually going to be talking about fictional crushes I had on girls before I realized I was bisexual. So basically, how I'm going, how this happened. Basically, um, when I was really young, it took me very, very long to realize that I was not straight, that I did find females attractive as I do with guys. Um, but when I would have the crushes on these female characters, I didn't realize they were crushes until like I look back and go, oh no, no, that was a crush. So yeah, I actually saw um, years ago um, Connie Glenn doing this type of video when she back when she was known as Nudorella, and it is like a really fun kind of video to do, like look back and stuff like that. And yeah, and I thought since it is the month of Pride, I thought why not? So yeah, I have made a bit of a list of these females. So I have so I have seven in total of fictional characters I've had crushes on, but there is one more character on this list that kind of has a story behind it, but I'm not gonna get into that just yet. So first I'm just gonna talk about the first seven that I didn't realize I had a crush on and before I realized I was bi took me so long to realize like but yeah anyways let's get on with the video all right so the first um character that probably is my earliest memory of having a crush on was Andromon from Digimon now I'm pretty sure I've seen that right I can never like properly say like Andromon and Andromon it always kind of confused me but Again, pictured here so you know who I'm talking about. Um, yeah, I remember as a kid just thinking I really liked the design of, I like the design of her because it was very different because obviously a lot of the other Digimon, they didn't really kind of have human forms. Like I'm trying, I don't think we even got Lilymon until later on, but everybody else didn't really have that kind of like transformation that, I, that I'm thinking of. I, I, I haven't watched Digimon in a while, so I think Lilymon might have came before, but memory, Edgar or Katie will tell you down below. But um, yeah, all right, so yeah. So I really liked her design, and I, from that day on, picked that she is my favorite Digimon, which she is, like she is my favorite Digimon out of at least, you know, the first season. But then I realized, no, it's not just the design you liked, girl, oh no. Oh no! No, you found her very, very attractive. Like, very. Like, I know we never really got to kind of see her face, but, like, I don't know. Just the way she looks, and she's pretty, and also she's really badass too. So, yeah, that was the, like, the earliest crush I can remember. Next up is, okay, so when I was, I'll start this off from a little story. So. When I was really young, I think I say I was probably around eight or nine years old and I had a GameCube, which to this day has been my favorite console ever because I have a lot of good memories on that console. And I had the game Super Smash Bros. Melee. And here is the fighter that I had a crush on. That is Princess Zelda. I'm pretty sure the one in Melee was uh, Princess Zelda from the Ocarina of Time one. And yeah, I remember always picking her. Like for me, my mains were either Princess Peach or Princess Zelda. I knew more about Peach than Zel like Zelda because I didn't really grow up playing Legend of Zelda. I didn't really get into those games until way later on. But I remember always um, picking Zelda as well, and then I realized, oh, I definitely had a crush on her. Like, cause even though, like, yes, the graphics weren't great, but I still found her to be very, very pretty. But again, I just kind of thought, oh, she's a princess, but she can kick butt. So 
I'm gonna find her like awesome and stuff, but knew you know, there was a definite crush because I definitely picked her more than Peach. Like, don't make me wrong. I don't think I had a crush on Peach. Like, that's one thing. I definitely didn't have a crush on her. But Zelda, all the way. But then, obviously, I kind of realized I had a crush on Link too, which I always find fun. It's like you knew you were bi when you realized you had a crush on both Zelda and Link. But um, yeah. But again, my crush on Zelda has grown. Furthermore, especially from the later games and also Breath of the Wild. Also, have you seen what she's gonna look like in the sequel? Like, oh my god, like, I get, like, oh, like, I'm so excited for that. But yeah, so Princess Zelda was definitely another one. So, another one, I think, I think I actually might have had this crush a bit actually earlier now that I think about it because it was when I was watching the uh, Spider Man cartoons, you know, like the one back on 4Kids. If you remember 4Kids, you're cool. But um, yes, yeah, so there was a Spider-Man 90s cartoon that was on Fox Kids and the crush that I had on a certain character was Black Cat. Yeah, I know. I had, I realized after all the, the like, I know I've only mentioned two, but I realized I have very different tastes in women when it comes to crushes. But yeah, Black Cat was definitely a crush of mine. Like she always looked really good. I really loved her. I actually much prefer her than uh, than obviously um, Mary Jane. I I much prefer Mary Jane later on, but I don't know Black Cat. I much preferred, and yeah, that was definitely a crush. Also, have you seen what she looks like in the new Spider-Man video game? Like damn. Like I have not played the game yet, but I've. Seen what other people have put online or what she looks like now and I'm like damn like damn 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 but um yeah all right next up is a, another female bad guy uh but who's also in comics but from a different comic not Marvel but we're going to DC this time and that is Harley Quinn from the Batman series you know the animated one like I know, obviously, like, I don't know, just the way she was, I just loved her personality, I loved just her character, like, I just loved her character overall, and like, yeah, I just like remember just, like, always staring at the TV whenever she was on. Again, still not realizing that there was a crush and not just, I think she's a cool character and all. I mean, she is and all, but... Like, damn. Like, yeah. I still don't understand how I didn't realize I wasn't straight back then. Again, I think I was at least 10 or 11, I think, when, the, when I watched the Batman animated series. I think I need to rethink that, but yes. Um, but yeah, Harley Quinn was definitely a, another one of mine. But yeah. Next up. Now, this is the character that actually got me thinking about making this video. And that's because we recently got something about her recently, and that is Tifa from Final Fantasy VII. Yes. Now, I'm sure you might have seen my reaction to that, and that is basically, like, I was so, so excited to see her finally, and she looks great, like, in the new graphics, but, I mean, I just always loved Tifa, even when I played the original ones back in the day on the PlayStation 1, but, yeah, I just... I just love her, she's just so strong and capable and just, yeah, I absolutely loved her. And also like, I think I even fell for her even more after watching Abbott Children when I was around teenager. Still don't understand how I did not realize that I was not straight at that point because damn that fight scene that she has, like in um, Advanced Children was like, damn. Um, yeah, so yeah. So B Tifa was basically the reason why this idea kind of came into my head to make this video. But I mean, yeah, but again, she just looks so, so good in the new game. And yeah, she definitely crushed that I had before I realized I was bisexual. But now I'm like, yep, that was a crush. So yeah. So thank you, Tifa, for giving me this idea. Next up is a another character from Square Enix. And that is Aqua from Kingdom Hearts Birth by Sleep. Now I remember I told you, it took me a while to realize that I was not straight. Um, but yeah, so yeah, I always just kind of thought it was awesome that we finally got to have a female, like, Keyblade user because obviously 
Kairi Yoshi gets one in two, but again, hardly ever uses it. She hardly, kinda doesn't really use it in Kingdom Hearts 3, but that's not the point. Um, but yeah, I fell for Aqua Heart. I loved her. She is Blueberry Mom. Like, she's amazing, and I love her, and I love her design, and yeah, I definitely, like, it was definitely a crush. Like, I would always pick to play her, regardless, like, when I picked up the my PSP, like, I obviously did the all three of the stories, but if I go to replay Birth by Sleep, I normally always pick Aqua because yes, it also like seeing Aqua in March 3. Ah, uh, yes, I was, she looked so beautiful and I cried so hard and oh my god. Anywho, this is number seven before I get into like the big story. Okay, the next one is basic, I think this is basically the last crush I had before I realized that nope, definitely you are not straight girl. And that was Rise from Persona 4. Now Persona 4 was the first Persona game I ever played. Um, I got into it, like I watched a YouTuber um, by the name of Nico B play the golden version. I did not have a uh, PS Vita at the time. But luckily one day I was just walking into CEX as Yadu and saw that they had the original Persona 4 on PlayStation 2, which I did have a PlayStation 2, so it was like, yay, I'm gonna grab it. So yeah, and honestly just playing it and for me like the f for me at least, I wasn't interested in a lot of the other girls. Like, I mean, Chie is cool, like, I don't mind her that much, but I wasn't feeling much. Yukiko, again, like, she's sweet, but she also has a really good sense of humor. But again, I wasn't really feeling anything. And then, Rise came into the picture, and I was like, oh my god, I love her. Like, she's just amazing. And I also love the fact that she's voiced by Laura Bailey who also voiced Toru from Fruits Basket. I first found it quite funny, because obviously we know, if you play Persona 4 or Golden, you know that Rise is a girl that set, says things that, that's on her mind. She doesn't really care, like she's an idol, but she doesn't care that, you know, she's a little bit more mischievous and, you know, she's very clear about her crush on the main character. And just the some of the stuff that she comes out with, and of course it is like Toru's voice, so I'm just like, so I always found it funny going, wow, I know Kyo said for for Toru to grow a backbone, but damn, like she took that that um, advice to heart. And honestly, I really love Risei's social link, and I fell for her even more. I did date the girl, all the girls, first time round, but then when I learned about what happened in Golden, I was like, I'm just going to, like, obviously the Valentine's Day um, event, I was like, I'm just gonna stay with Rise because I'm not dealing with that upset, but, um, yeah, so yeah, Rise, like, I love Rise. I'm hoping to cosplay her at MCM this year, so, yeah, but yeah. I know there's people who don't like Rise, and I kinda understand, but I don't care. I love her, and she deserves more love, but yeah. This final girl that has a story behind it, because I think thanks to this, it really helped me kind of come together with my sexuality. Like, it took me a really long time to kind of figure myself out, because I think when I was 14, I sort of had this panic that I, I thought that I might be gay because I started finding a lot more females attractive, but then a part of me was kind of like, no, but you still like guys as well, so that can't be it because when I was 14, I didn't know there were other sexualities. I just thought you were either straight or you were gay. So I, I kind of told myself that no, i just going for a phase girls can like girls without it being like, without you being gay, you know, cause you, uh, you get those, you know, female straight crushes if you get what I mean. But yeah, so I didn't think much of it and I was convinced that I was straight. That was it, no, no thing, no nothing, no nothing. Um, and then I think when I was around 16, I learned about the word bisexual. Like a friend of mine told me about it and for some strange reason in my brain, didn't click to go, oh, that's maybe what I am, but I was still at that point convinced that I was straight. 
I know, like, it's one of these kind of things. Um, and then when I was around 19 years old, it was when I was getting into Persona, and I learned obviously, you know, there were other games, and I decided to play Persona 3. And I actually found it on my PlayStation 3 because they were because there was a digital download for Persona 3 FPS. So I thought, oh, I might as well play the previous game because there is that part in Persona where basically we get to visit the place for Persona 3. So it'd be nice to understand the references that they made, obviously, in 4. So yeah, before I kind of go into it, like when I was 19, I actually did start questioning myself again, like about my sexuality. Like I was very much like, was it am I bisexual or am I just thinking that? So I didn't really think much on it, but I it was kind of you know one of these things in the back of my mind. When I saw Mitsuru from Persona 3, the, the, the part of my brain that normally tells me, oh no, it's not a crush, you just think this character is really cool, that part kind of just like disappeared. Like it was Thanos snapped, gone, poof, like. I was in total like, I, like Mitsuru just talked first and I just like was like, whoa, this girl, like, I just like, I think it was like instant attraction and I was like, oh my god. And that, um, and of course it kind of, it was sort of so strange because I never really had that kind of feeling before. Like, well, I kind of did when it came to like, you know, actually having real crushes on females, but it really like, properly helped me like I think there were obviously more stuff that kind of helped me more but this was the start of it I think where I actually started to realize huh maybe I am not straight and I fell for Mitsuru like I tried to, my best to obviously get the max um, knowledge so obviously I could talk to her and as I did a social link I fell for even more because she is adorable like honestly like so many people always see Mitsuru as stock up, but I'm just like, you obviously have not done her social link. Go do her social link before you make that decision. And honestly, yes, I fell for, for her. She's so adorable. That whole scene in the social link where she's discovering fast food for the first time is adorable and I love her. So yeah, I think for me that was a sort of gateway into realizing yes you are not straight and then obviously other things happened and by the age 20 that's when I was like huh I'm bisexual whoop, whoop. but um, yeah so yeah that actually helped me quite a lot realizing my sexuality and yeah I can't believe it took me so long but I know there are other people like that as well who it took you guys long to figure out your sexuality your gender etc etc and that's you know that's one of these, these things it is pride month but i know there's also not a lot of people that are out yet or still questioning themselves and yeah so honestly like i ha i do give thanks to mitsuru for that and even though yes it was more of a small part of realizing that yeah i wasn't straight it helped me out a lot so yeah that kind of I guess is my story on figuring out my sexuality um but yeah so again happy pride month and I hope you enjoyed this video remember to like and subscribe for more fandom content then you can shake a stick at and yeah see ya and happy pride month